California is facing a big problem with both drought and flooding. It's hard to understand how this can happen together. Welcome to Superstructures. In this video, we delve into the remarkable project of the site's reservoir, California's $400 billion solution to tackle water scarcity. Join us as we explore its construction, benefits, and potential challenges. Let's dive in. Water scarcity has always been a challenge in California. Many parts of the state, like the Great Basin, Mojave, and Colorado regions are considered deserts. Even when the first settlers arrived centuries ago, they struggled to farm due to the limited water available. Unfortunately, not much has changed. In October 2021, the governor declared a statewide drought emergency, urging people to cut their water usage by 15% to improve the situation. However, even after almost 18 months in 2023, the emergency hasn't been lifted. California has been facing drought conditions for over a thousand days now. In the midst of a prolonged drought, California faced heavy rainfall causing damaging floods. These simultaneous emergencies of drought and floods highlight the challenge of water management. Most of the rainfall drains away or flows into the sea, leaving the state with insufficient stored water. This seesaw pattern of excessive water and insufficient supply continues, perpetuating the cycle of water scarcity in California. The pressing question is, can California take action to address this situation? The state has made significant efforts in the past. In the 1950s, California faced a similar cycle of droughts and floods occurring rapidly. Determined to find a solution, the state initiated the State Water Project. The primary objective of this project was to create a system for storing water during periods of flooding, enabling its reuse during droughts. Over the initial years, they constructed over 20 dams, which facilitated the collection of water in vast reservoirs during heavy rainfall. Among the notable reservoirs, Lake Oroville stands out, being held back by the impressive Oroville Dam, the largest dam in the United States. Rising over 200 meters, this colossal structure safeguards hundreds of millions of cubic meters of water. Another well-known reservoir is Pyramid Lake, situated near Los Angeles. During drought periods, the water accumulated in these immense reservoirs can be distributed to farms and cities. This awe-inspiring process relies on an extensive network of canals, aqueducts, and pumping stations. Some water levels hundreds of kilometers, even crossing mountain ranges. Notably, the California Aqueduct plays a significant role, carrying water from the Sierra Nevada all the way to Los Angeles, branching off to supply millions of people along its path. The Edmonston Pumping Plant, a remarkable feat, lifts this water over the Tehachapi Mountains, reaching a height of 600 meters. Visualize the enormity of pumping a river over the top of the One World Trade Center. Remarkably, no other pumping plant worldwide lifts water to such heights as the Edmonston does. Overall, California's water management system is recognized as one of the most advanced and ambitious worldwide. However, during the 1960s and 70s, when these water facilities were constructed, they were initially planned as stage one of a larger endeavor. The intention was to build additional dams and canals in the 80s and 90s. But various factors led to the postponement of those projects. Economic challenges with California grappling with mounting debts played a significant role in the decision. Additionally, environmental concerns arose due to the disruption of natural river flows caused by these water facilities. This disruption adversely affected local species, particularly salmon and steelhead trout, whose populations drastically declined as they were unable to reach their breeding grounds due to the presence of dams and pumping stations. In light of these issues, California chose to halt the subsequent phase of construction and rely on the first stage projects to suffice. In the initial years, these new facilities made a tangible impact. Around two-thirds of the water collected by the system was allocated to urban areas, while the remaining portion was utilized for irrigation in orchards and farms. It was estimated that the entire system contributed approximately $400 billion annually to the statewide economy. However, in recent years, the existing elements of the state water project have encountered challenges. When these components were initially constructed, California population was under 20 million people. However, over the past few decades, the state's population has doubled, leading to a significant surge in water demand. Unfortunately, the dams and canals have struggled to keep up with this increased demand. This is a major contributing factor to the recurring issues with the drought that California has faced. As aptly stated by Mike Wade, 
the executive director of the California Farm Water Coalition, our water demands have exceeded the capacity for which the system was designed. Amidst rising temperatures and worsening droughts, California faces the urgent need to upgrade its water management system. To address this, the state plans to construct the site's reservoir, a floodable valley near Sacramento. This off-river reservoir aims to capture excess water from storms, ensuring a reliable water supply during dry periods. The project's environmental benefits and potential have been recognized since the 1950s. By enhancing water storage and resilience, California seeks to mitigate the impact of climate change and meet the growing water demands of its population. Climate change exacerbates California's challenges. With temperatures rising by nearly 2 degrees Celsius in the past century, scorching heat waves and worsening droughts persist. The growing population strains the outdated water management system. To address this, California plans to construct the site's reservoir, a flooded valley that captures excess water from storms for drier periods. Initially considered in the 1950s, the ambitious project was set aside due to cost concerns. However, recent years have brought a change of heart. While not a complete solution, the reservoir's capacity to store over 2 cubic kilometers of water can supply drinking water for thousands of homes for a year, offering substantial relief. To construct the site's reservoir, workers will begin by building dams to seal any gaps between the valley's hills. The primary dams, Sites Dam and Golden Gate Dam, will be situated on the eastern side, with additional dams located in the northern region. These dams will transform the valley into a watertight basin. The next step is to fill the reservoir. Unlike traditional methods of damming rivers to allow flooding, as seen with the Auroville Dam and the Feather River, the Sites Valley lacks major rivers and instead has shallow creeks. Therefore, a different approach will be employed. Approximately 25 kilometers east of the valley flows the Sacramento River, California's largest river. During rainy seasons, the state plans to extract water from the Sacramento River, transport it through fields, hills, and towns via pipelines, and pour it into the site's valley. It's akin to a colossal water tap filling an immense bucket. During dry periods, the stored water can be released, providing relief to nearby areas. Pumping water from the river to the valley requires substantial energy, but the state water project deems it worthwhile, especially considering the potential energy recovery. When water is released from the reservoir, it will pass through hydroelectric generators, generating around 80% of the power required of the initial pumping process. Construction is scheduled to commence in 2024, with a worst-case scenario of 2025. Completion is expected within six years, by 2030 or 2031. Some individuals are already expressing disappointment that the project won't be ready sooner. During the floods in early 2023, a substantial amount of rainwater surged through Sacramento. If the state's reservoir had been operational, it could have captured this flood water for future use, providing enough supply to sustain over 200,000 Californian households for the remainder of the year. Jerry Brown, executive director of the Sites Project Authority, emphasized that such situations with intense high flows are precisely why the Sites Reservoir is being constructed. The absence of the reservoir during that time was a missed opportunity, and people are eager to avoid such losses in the future. However, there are some potential drawbacks to consider. One concern raised by certain individuals is the potential increase in water prices to finance the project, with fears of a possible 300% hike. Although it remains uncertain whether such an increase would materialize, it has become a significant source of apprehension. After all, what good is additional water supply if it becomes unaffordable for the population? Furthermore, environmental groups have expressed concerns about the impact of pumping water from the Sacramento River on migrating fish. The construction of dams such as the one at Orville unavoidably disrupts the natural environment, hindering fish from swimming upstream due to the presence of concrete barriers. Unlike traditional reservoirs, the site's project as an off-stream reservoir will not block the Sacramento River. The only minor disruption will be the presence of high-power pumps, but advanced fish screens will prevent animals from being sucked into them. Moreover, the state water project has made a commitment to allocate a portion of the collected water from the site's reservoir to support local species. This is particularly crucial for fish species that rely on deep, cold pools for breeding, which tend to become warm and shallow during dry seasons. The site's reservoir would help maintain the appropriate depth and temperature on these pools, serving as an important aspect of the overall project. While prioritizing human needs, 
The project also aims to provide assistance to other species. Although there is still a chance that the project may not be realized due to insufficient funding, the current outlook suggests that the reservoir will be operational by 2030. Do you believe the site's reservoir is a valuable addition to California? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more engaging content on superstructures, where we explore the fascinating world of extravagant constructions. Don't forget to subscribe for regular updates.